rise of a new day on Delmarva, where the sun lights the sky, creating a collage of colors stretching across the Chesapeake Bay. And as the seasons start to set, we see how time alters life. The sky, a golden hue to blue. Year after year, the light shines across every piece of this peninsula. Hi, I'm Captain Willie Dykes. Every season on Del Marva is like a new beginning that starts to transform the way we live our lives. And you're about to see just how that's possible from our eye in the sky. Because time will pass and the seasons will change, but we'll always be 14 counties, three states, one Del Marva. The peninsula is just a small piece of a bigger picture. And when the calendar falls on September, the cooler air sets in, especially along the water in the chop tank. But for watermen, the world is their oyster. And just like any other morning, you'll find plenty of boats getting an early start. You'll also see one of the few skipjacks still in operation. And on board is a crew looking to grab the biggest bushel of oysters straight out of the Chesapeake Bay. More than anywhere else in the world. For hours, these men will scrape along the riverbed, hoping to bring up the biggest haul. Afterwards, the harvest heads to market, and the cycle repeats as it has for generations. But they aren't the only ones looking for a good harvest this season. As we inch closer to the heart of the peninsula, there are all kinds of cash crops that cover every county. From sod on the mid-shore, to the corn crafted in Caroline County. However, the priority for farmers here in Princess Anne are these fields filled with soybeans that are ready to be harvested. And for hours, these farmers will spend their day circling this field in a combined effort. It's a way of life learned from the thousands of Native Americans that lived here before us, just done a little differently. Lessons of living off the land have turned to be one of the main economic drives not only in Somerset County, but in Delmarva as a whole. And while these fields begin to bear down until next year, others allow for a design that's one of a kind. Across several communities, you'll be amazed at what people on this peninsula can make with a little help from Mother Nature. From the air, the path is quite simple, but on the ground, it's an easy way to get lost. Every fall, these fields give credit where credit is due, because our farmers feed families. However, an ever-changing part of this season is waiting for us in another part of Sussex County, and it's much greater than we could imagine. The Great Cypress Swamp, the largest freshwater wetland in Delaware. So big, it stretches into Wicomico and Worcester counties. Now what's left of this area has been virtually untouched since the Ice Age, which created vegetation along ancient sand ridges. 
The swamp once consumed 60,000 acres, but years of ditching, draining, timbering, and fires have dwindled it to a sixth of its size. Its native species are bald cypress trees, which are typically found in the southeastern part of the country. But lucky for us, their range goes as far north as the first state. It's under these type of conditions that the trees thrive and give them a chance to come back every year. And they are a sight to see at this time in the season as the leaves start to change from green to brown and every shade in between. And that's when we meet up with the Pocomoke River the second largest Delmarva tributary to the Chesapeake. Spanning 66 miles, bending back and forth in between five counties, and stretching through all three states. This river was a vital resource for the natives that settled along the banks. They were known as the Algonquian tribe. The Pocomokes used the water for food and the trees for cover. And a picturesque view as the sunlight shines into every crack and creek in this watershed. As we follow along, the river begins to flow into the bay. The country's largest estuary is an important feature that affects our everyday lives, encompassing 64,000 square miles. It covers parts of six states and the capital. Here on Delmarva, it feeds life near and far and becomes an aid to navigation. As we head north along our western shoreline, we see firsthand how the water winds its way through our most remote areas. And we find ourselves in one of Maryland's largest wetlands, the Blackwater National Wildlife Refuge a diverse mix of forest, marsh, and water. This area contains one-third of the state's tidal wetlands. It is referred to as the Everglades of the North and protects Lower Dorchester County from storms that come across the Chesapeake. But it's also a popular spot for controlled brush burns. These wildfires are set to reduce hazards and renew forest areas. They're done typically during the fall when the temperatures are cooler and there's less danger of serious fires forming. A way to restore the refuge back to its natural state. The Blackwater is also home to hordes of waterfowl and wildlife like white pelicans, which come here every year on their way to the south. And as they find refuge, the sun starts to set in the distance. The days turn into night a lot sooner this time of year, and that's when the Friday night lights turn on. Fall means Friday night football on Delmarva. The boys of fall face off head to head. Up first is Easton's Warriors against the Wai Hai tribe. The Warriors have the ball first and are on the offensive. Though the Indians did not come this far to go down so easily. And then Easton is back in play, going to the 40, 30, 20. He's not stopping until But now to the Henlopen Conference. It's homecoming night, Laurel hosting Delmar. From the 40-yard line, not one, not two, but three touchdowns. A few months later, the playoffs are finally here. First up, the Bayside Conference. The Golden Elks have made their way down to the North Carolina Bulldogs fumble on the field. Elks have the ball. And that is touchdown number one. Heading to the Henlopen. Woodbridge and Wilmington. 
the boys are not backing down. Barely in bounds, but not out of the game yet. We'll settle the score later. For now, we'll settle down for another day. The start of a new day on Delmarva. The sunlight rises out of the east. Touching the treetops in Trap Pond State Park. The colors of fall have spread across Sussex County. Every year, shades of green turn to red and yellow, surrounding the pond's edge and stretching throughout the park, which became controlled by the state in 1951. We also come across another popular spot of bald cypress trees, a natural array of fall foliage in the first state. However, the season doesn't stick around for very long when the temperatures start to fall and the colors of autumn carry out their final days until next year. But the hues of our home are a sight to see in other parts as well. And when the leaves start to fall, the trees begin to bear down for the end of the year when old man winter makes a return. And we find ourselves in a cold snap. begins to freeze over and Peach Blossom Creek becomes much colder than it's been in months. Sitting along the Atlantic coastline, Delmarva can see many winter storms sweep through our area and the result is a white coat of snow that blankets the peninsula. But the cold air doesn't put a freeze on everything. In fact, some are encouraged by the cold. This time of year, a tradition brings in holiday cheer up and down the Chesapeake. For 50 years, dozens of pilots throughout the mid-Atlantic fly from Kent Island to Tangier, Virginia, with boughs of holly beneath their wings, soaring side by side with their sights on an island in Accomack County. Tangier traffic, Rudolph is turning, final on the right, downwind for two. And one by one, each plane lands and falls in line at the Tangier Airport. This annual holly run started a half century ago because a local pilot saw an issue with sea level rise. He wanted to bring Christmas cheer back to Tangier since holly trees can no longer grow here. Today, Santa and his helpers not only bring decorations, but also raise thousands of dollars for the island's winter services. And while we wait for the holidays, another seasonal flight flocks to Delmarva. An Atlantic migration from the air to the water. It's an unconventional snow shower that changes whenever the wind takes them. Hundreds of thousands of waterfowl take flight along the Atlantic Flyway. This snow geese spectacle arrives in late November from their summer breeding grounds in the northern Arctic tundra. Sharply shifting formation as they prepare to land. And while this gaggle of geese sits dormant for now, within moments, the field takes flight headed to their next location. But they're not the only ones up in the air during this time of year. Taking to Delmarva's skyline, tundra swans come to chow down on clams in the Chesapeake Bay. The birds form permanent bonds with their mates early on in life. Every winter, they're in their element, migrating to the eastern shore like areas here on Eastern Neck Island. The ice is just thick enough to support this bevy along the banks of the Chester River. But they're not alone out here. 
because birds of a feather all flock together, searching for a spot to settle down for the night. While the sun dips into the distance and lights the western sky with an array of vibrant colors. But the holiday season is upon us, and that means other lights are decking the halls on Delmarva. Cue the music and the lights, because it's the most wonderful time of the year. Holiday decor with lights galore. Our aerial sleigh ride sets off in Worcester County with more than a million lights. A light spectacular you can see from miles away. But the holiday cheer continues on Mount Hermon Road in Wicomico County, an annual family tradition that takes on a life of its own. And then we dash off to the east. For two weeks, close to 20,000 lights grace this home, putting Pittsville, Maryland on the nice list. Then to Sussex County, stopping in Seaford for the drive through express. Every inch of this home on Old Furnace Road is lit from the ground to the tree line. And our joyride just gets brighter in Lewis. Every light twinkles to the tune of Christmas music, ringing in the season for drivers from all parts of Sussex County. So happy holidays to all, and to all a good night. The first light of day, and the first sounds from a frost-covered field surrounding the woods in the first state. As the temps drop below freezing, hunters set their sights on what lies amongst the trees. Walking quietly across Sussex County in their winter coats, white-tailed deer adapt to this weather by insulating their bodies and producing a water-repellent skin, a valuable asset in the snow. Finding refuge under the trees, these animals hunker down for a long winter day. The morning cold snap strikes the shoreline as well. An arctic cool front dips over Delmarva, turning the Tangier Sound into a tundra, but it also shuts down the route from Crisfield to tiny Tangier Island. And that doesn't stop Good Samaritans from Somerset County. Several shipments are set on board the J. Millard Tall's ice cutter to make the trek through the ice to our friends in Virginia. Hours later, we cut our way to the docks but there is help needed just north of here, too. Smith Islands shut off from the rest of the world. And in order to keep them afloat, boats bite the bitter cold by stopping this open waterway from freezing over again. These water taxis sail to the island to help prevent more ice from building back up. But it's not an easy task and can't be done alone. Whether with the help of other watermen or a warm-up from Mother Nature. While the western side thaws out, there's another saving grace on the eastern coastline. As winter storms blanket the peninsula, they can also bring ferocious conditions, like the Great Blizzard of 1888. Gale force winds, frigid seas, and blinding snow pummeled our coastline. It was March 11, 1888, when the Great White Hurricane was formed because a northeaster ran into a gust of cold air. Over two feet of snow fell across Delaware, but the backside of the blizzard blasted the Delaware breakwater, destroying dozens of vessels anchored just offshore. And that's when the Lewis and Cape Henlopen life-saving crews stepped in to save the day. Rowing through the wreckage, they braved 90 mile an hour winds to bring over 170 people safely to shore.
And watching it all from above is Delmarva's ever-growing bald eagle population. Flying in and out of formation, these powerful predators claim this treetop terrace as their own. Seeing this many in one area is very unlikely, but the population has been growing on the peninsula since the mid-20th century, after being on the brink of extinction. Across the country, the threat of people and pesticides called for a plan of action, especially near the Chesapeake and Delaware Bays. And decades later, the birds of prey were back on track. For now, they remain high in the sky, dominating Delmarva's airways. While the cold weather wisps with the wind, our day is coming to an end. But some lights never go out completely, and their structures are a little harder to replace after Mother Nature's wrath. Like in the middle of the Chesapeake Bay, Back in the day, there was once an island that sat here as a piece of Dorchester County. Over time, the island slowly dipped beneath the water because of sea level rise and erosion. Though one thing stands the test of time, the Sharps Island Lighthouse. The first one dates back to the early 1800s, but this screw pile structure has sat here since 1866. A century later, Sheets of ice severely tested its strength and tore a part of the caisson, sharply tilting the lighthouse as you see it here. There's something about seeing the sunset from above. The final days of winter are starting to set in. This stretch of cold weather is over Tomorrow, Delmarva turns to a new chapter. And just like that, Delmarva begins to thaw out. The ice melts into rivers and streams, and the sun rises a little closer to our hemisphere, which means life begins to grow from the ground up. These daffodils dance in the morning light along Route 50 in Dorchester County. It's known as the birth of March, and some say it symbolizes rebirth and a new beginning which fits because spring has officially arrived. Buds start to bloom. The ground slowly turns to green. And some of our hardest workers head back to the fields. This time of year also springs up another important Delmarva industry. Agriculture is essential for many Delmarva families. Now these empty fields may not look like much to some, but it's a way of life to others. And for farmers, it all starts right now. Fields of corn, beans, and wheat have been grown right here on the peninsula for centuries. All they need this year is for someone to plant the seed. Timing means everything when it comes to having a successful harvest in the fall. It becomes a day-long endeavor in every county, putting a level of mass production to the test. One after another, crops create food for families and a major investment for our farmers. Living off the land is a huge advantage with rewarding benefits. But while these crops are just starting out, some are actually ready for harvest. We head down to Virginia's eastern shore where a different type of product is growing in Parksley. 
Right here, sitting next to the tree line, is a field filled with flowers known as rapeseed. For centuries, pastures of this plant have covered almost every continent in the world. The bright yellow plant is grown for its oil-rich seed, which is a resource for a variety of products. Today, rapeseed oil is used in bottle caps, plastic wrap, and engines. A beautiful sea of yellow seed from above with boundless potential for the peninsula. Now, as we spring through the season, there's another sight to see in Sussex County. Next to the tree line on Pepper Creek is over 1,000 feet of tidal waterfront and Delmarva's first botanic garden. Beautiful and boundless. It's a balance of over 250 different species of plants planted by our local volunteers. The finest example of conservation in Delaware. Twisting and turning, this garden offers a front seat view of over 70,000 plants. Quickly growing into a meadow of Mother Nature's magnificence. However, sometimes Mother Nature has other plans. Rolling in across the Chesapeake Bay, dark clouds cover the sky, bringing thunder and lightning. It can happen anytime, anywhere. Stretching from the sky, it strikes down, this one reaching up to 120 miles an hour. And in the aftermath is tragedy. Houses torn into pieces, Trees thrown on top of homes. Barns broken down into rubble. Tornadoes are not uncommon on Delmarva, but they leave behind total chaos for those left to pick up the pieces and bring their lives back to normal. And then it becomes a story about community. Families working together to help one another sifting through the wreckage and lifting old memories to make room for new ones. All the while counting their blessings for all the things Mother Nature could have taken away. Because once the dust settles, family and friends are all people around here really need. And there's always a light at the end of the tunnel. especially when that light brings much warmer air across all 14 counties. It's that time of year when we head to the ball field. Little leagues are a chance for kids to learn anew the thing called teamwork and that practice makes perfect. Even if first you don't succeed, try, try again. The lesson here is that from the beginners to the minor leagues, there's no I in team. But eventually you will hit one out of the park. In the spring season, the sun starts to set a little later on. But it is a source of everything that gives life. The Earth is just one of many things that revolve around the sun, but there are a few things that orbit our planet as well. Amidst the stars, the moon becomes the brightest spot in the night sky, orbiting the Earth once every month and every season it has a different shade due to the location of the sun and the earth. But the moon also influences our tides that come in and out of our waterways. And there's one tradition that follows that rotation this time of year.
It's the beginning of another day on the Delaware Bay. The sunrise is something quite familiar to one species here in Slaughter Beach. It's a prehistoric migration that's taken place for the past 300 million years. Every spring for nearly a month, these horseshoe crabs come to the Atlantic coastline to lay the next generation. The name originates from the shape of its head, even though it's closely related to spiders and scorpions. The females are much larger than the males. And every new or full moon, they line the shore between the months of May and June. And once they lay their eggs, they head back out to spend the rest of the year crawling the ocean floor. As we head down the coast, the temperatures are starting to rise, and we find another species taking over our coast. Summertime sets in between the ocean and the Chesapeake. Hundreds take over the coastline for a day of fun in the sun, on the beach and on the water. Coming from all across the East Coast, it's the best time of the year to get outdoors and enjoy everything Mother Nature has to offer. And you do not have to say that twice to some. Swimming up and down our coastline in their natural habitat, bottlenose dolphins are a common sight out in the Atlantic Ocean. Coming up for air every minute or so, most tend to travel in pods, and they communicate by a complex system of squeaks and whistles. They're one of the most intelligent species on the planet and are found in most warm waters. Its slender, streamlined body allows it to move through the water with ease, reaching up to 18 miles per hour. But there's a need for more speed on the western shoreline. The thunder takes over the chop tank, putting the pedal to the metal. Hydro boats cruise into Cambridge for the annual power boat regatta. By taking it full throttle, these boats can top out at over 100 miles per hour. But this is just the first of many summertime traditions, and some boats just like to cruise at their own speed. Many head for the main stream and make their way across their closest waterway. But instead of surfing, others enjoy their time soaring across our skies. Airplanes take over our airways at airports everywhere. Flying in and out of formation. Down the runway and direct to another destination. Aircraft come in different sizes. Some have been around for a while the history of aviation, having a go at what is going, going, and gone. Staying in the skies and back in our sights is the family of bald eagles we met during the winter. They've returned to the same spot, but they've brought bigger company. 
The Blackwater National Wildlife Refuge is the highest concentration of bald eagles on the east coast, north of Florida. Young eagles take about four years to grow the white feathers on their head. For now, they're learning from their elders because in a few months, they'll take off on their own. A similar story takes off in another nest. Ospreys are a common sight seen up and down the Atlantic Flyway. Both parents take their turn guarding the eggs. And once the temps start to fall, they'll soar to the south. But not everyone migrates off Delmarva. White-tailed deer roam around in herds, especially after fawns are born between May and June. But another species called Sika deer also walk these wetlands. They're originally from East Asia, but were brought to Dorchester County in the early 1900s. Their main distinction is the white spots that they keep into adulthood. And one of the first to witness the wide variety of wildlife we have here was Captain John Smith, a brave man who first set out to map the Chesapeake Bay during the early 17th century. Embarking on two explorations and covering over 3,000 miles, Smith's missions were not so simple. Find a route to the Pacific, claim wealth for the crown, and trade with the natives. Delmarva was home to the Algonquin people, several tribes that set up to live off the land and the water. And in June of 1608, Smith's voyage brought him here to the Tangier Sound near Somerset County. They taught the European settlers how to live off the land. And as the years have gone by, we've seen the value in the friends we make along the way a society that learned how to socialize by finding a common ground. And just to the west of here, we drift into Cordova, Maryland, to the state's largest mass ascension. The Chesapeake Bay Balloon Festival returns every August to Talbot County. Dozens of hot air balloons hurry before the sun sets each one with a different design, but setting off just the same. Sitting suspended in the air, the balloons lift as the heat rises into the sky. The first of these flights date back to 1783. And now it's another eastern shore eye in the sky. The sun's golden hour glistens on top of the water's edge, heating up Harris Creek and heading out for another hard day's work. Watermen have to get up much earlier because we're well into Maryland's blue crab season. Between April and December, they set their line, hoping to bring in bushels by the boatload. It's a custom passed down from generation to generation. And for the past century, the largest blue crab fishery in the world is right here in the Chesapeake Bay. And this spot near Tillman Island is the definition of a waterman's world. Each boat captain has their own method, but the end goal is the same. As we head cross country, our waterways are getting a little crowded. Chincoteague Island. People from all over the world line up and down this channel just in time for the tide, waiting for the guests of honor. And here they come marching down, the Assateague Wild Ponies. This annual Delmarva tradition takes the herd to Chincoteague to control the island's pony population. And just like that, they enter the water. The crowd cheers them on, following their leader to get to the other side. 
First, the foals will be sold at auction, and then the rest of the herd will head back for another year, roaming peacefully. We set off to the west, where much of the land has been untouched for centuries. Most of Virginia's eastern shore looks much like this. Marshes and muddy rivers make up Accomack County's bayside. Now, as we mentioned, the first settler to see this site was Captain John Smith. He journeyed up this shoreline, making his way north, stopping for food and new findings. But today, few find the time to stop during the summer. Modern times have made things faster with a little manpower. One of the biggest wonders of the world, the Chesapeake Bay Bridge Tunnel, brings travelers from Virginia's mainland to the eastern shore. The first span opened in 1964, the second in 1999. But what makes it a one-of-a-kind design is where it dips into the bay, not once, but twice. It's the first of its type and has transported over 130 million people under insurmountable conditions. While being constructed, it faced hurricanes, northeasters, and the ever-changing current. The hot summer sun has set all this up for the perfect storm system. Year after year, the clouds roll off the Atlantic or Chesapeake. And our barrier islands get the brunt of it. The surf surges several feet in the air, crashing the coastline. These strips of land show Mother Nature's mayhem. As we cross back into Maryland, Assateague Island is no exception to change. It was called the Great Hurricane of 1933 that forever drew a line in the sand. It was August 22nd when the hellacious storm tore a hole between Assateague and Ocean City. Torrential rains fell for days before the inland bays overfilled and finally burst, creating this breach. However, there's much irony with the inlet. For decades, the town wanted the state and federal government to build an access point for fishermen. Once the jetties were built, the town's tourism and economy boomed, and Worcester County would never be the same again. Now, while Mother Nature helped carve a greater good, further north, a man-made canal came with a similar purpose. The Delaware Bay turns into the Delaware River. And once we near Newcastle County, we notice our peninsula is more of an island. The Chesapeake and Delaware Canal connects the bodies of water that create our boundaries. The idea started in the 1600s and was simple. Shorten the time it takes to go around the whole peninsula. With Delaware, Maryland, and Pennsylvania on board, the project started in 1804 in Delaware City. 2,600 men hauled dirt from this ditch for 14 miles. It was not until the 1920s when the canal got a new entrance and a wider pathway. The new improvements bridged the gap for drivers and the railroad industry. And then the end of the canal meets the Elk River, a tributary to the bay. It's just one of many that contribute to the bay's health, whether good or bad. In recent summers, we've seen how the world is much smaller than you may think. Several storms flooded the north in the bay's longest tributary, the Susquehanna River. It has a history of frequent flooding. The latest was in 2018. The murky waters brought sediments, trees, and debris down from Pennsylvania, all coming for the Chesapeake with only one line of defense, the Conowingo Dam. It was designed with 53 floodgates. They've only had to use them when the water crests higher than usual. In 2018, 20 of the gates were opened to prevent places like Port Deposit 
from being evacuated. But that came at a cost to the health of the bay. Harmful sediments and nutrients collected at Conowingo were sent drifting into the bay and threatening life above and below the water's surface. But the bay has always been about balance. Life is full of boundless potential since the beginning of time. The sun sets on another summer, one we'll always remember. And that means the season is coming to a close. Another year on Delmarva is returning right back to the beginning. Each season showing us a different shade of Delmarva. From the first day of fall when the leaves start to change. middle of winter when the snow covers every county. Suddenly spring steps in and the ground gets a little greener. And the summer sun shines brighter than ever before. But the more things change, the more they stay the same. Thank you for coming along with us all year long across our one-of-a-kind island oasis. You know, as the seasons shift, Mother Nature shapes the way we live our daily lives. The Delmarva Peninsula is just a small part of this great nation, and our eyes in the sky offer you a better view and a better sight from above. As the sun drifts out of sight, our flights come to an end. But the colors that cover this country will carry on to another day.